Tonight on 39 Dunedin News, a call to give our parking wardens a break. Figures show they're the subject of regular abuse in Dunedin. The makeup of our city council is up for review, but not everyone agrees on the proposals. And Aramoana residents call on the council for help to protect a local wildlife reserve. Good evening Dunedin, I'm Callum Proctor. On average, local parking wardens are subject to abuse every fortnight. That's according to the latest data compiled by the City Council. And it's prompting calls for calm. Jane Lebeau says parking officers need thick skin. The job involves early starts and late nights, keeping an eye out for illegal and inconsiderate parking. In the last financial year, there's been 30 different incidents of abuse towards local parking officers. But Lebeau says the sometimes thankless role is a crucial one. Well, it frees up the parking for other people to use the parking, to do their shopping or to do whatever else they need to do around the town. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's making it fair for everyone to, to find space in Dunedin. Local incidents of aggression towards parking officers include threatening behaviour, as well as verbal and even physical abuse. Lebeau says most people understand that parking controls are necessary, although the odd flare-up happens. We are trained uh, to deal with difficult people and the training is ongoing. Um, and it, it doesn't happen very often, but it does happen and we, we are prepared for that. The City Council issued more than 60,000 parking fines in the 12 months to July, boosting coffers by more than $2 million. Lebeau says double parking and other poor etiquettes common in Dunedin, which is unfair on all motorists, and she urges drivers to act rationally when ticketed. Talk to us. I'm, I'm certainly willing to listen to somebody and, and why they are parked the way they are, if it's uh, you know, legally parked, uh, or even on a pay and display, you know, why they're late back or whatever it is. Talk to us. We will listen. We'll take everything into consideration. Despite the obvious downside, Lebeau finds her job rewarding, as she's constantly meeting interesting people from all walks of life. But for her, the best part is serving the city, keeping things safe and fair on the streets. David DeLorean, 39, Dunedin News. Department of Conservation staff are celebrating the most successful albatross season in over a decade. They're currently banding 26 chicks in preparation for departure from Tairoa Head. It's the highest number of chicks at the colony since 2003. And staff say getting juvenile birds to the banding stage takes 11 months of hard work. The albatross chicks will lose their remaining down over the next month as their wing feathers develop for flight. Based on the season's success, staff estimate the albatross population will increase by two or three breeding pairs in the next decade. Arguments are unfolding at the City Council as its representation review continues. Many voters want the ward system scrapped, but it's the future of community boards that's sparking the most debate. All right, moving on, Otago Museum staff are up against the country's best exhibition designers in line for a national award. Anna Taggart and Craig Scott are being recognised for their exhibition on Ralph Hoteri's personal ceramics collection. It's a finalist in the Designers Institute of New Zealand Awards to be announced in October. The exhibition includes artwork by Hoteri and ceramics by local potter Barry Brickle. Other finalist exhibitions have been put together by top designers at Weta Workshop, Te Papa and the Auckland War Memorial Museum. Arguments are unfolding at the City Council as its rep uh, representation review continues. So many voters want the ward system scrapped, but it's the future of community boards that's sparking the most debate. There's considerable disagreement over the way residents should be represented at the City Council. A hearing for submissions is being held as part of the council's mandatory representation review. Mark Brown is one resident voicing his opinion as a member of the Wakawaiiti Coastal Community Board. 
and he says boards are an important part of local government. The value of community boards is they're representing minorities that otherwise don't get heard and unfortunately the, the representation committee um, count heads rather than the, the, the value of the, um, that the city gets from these outlying areas. He says community board decisions are often criticised, seen as having little value by residents and even some within the council. But he says that shouldn't be a reason to scrap them or reduce numbers as proposed. We should keep it as it is. Um, we can tweak little changes if we, if we need to, but just because somebody says there needs to be a review, it doesn't necessarily mean you need to make changes. And I think it's something that's working very successfully. Brian Mill is another submitter, having previously served on the Mosgill Tyree Community Board. He says he understands how boards operate, and he supports their retention in general. But he thinks changes are necessary to iron out perceived problems. In some respects, maybe community boards need to be uh, given a bit more power, but I also think they need to be closely watched because there seems to be, and I know in the Moscow Tari one, uh, they're getting away from their community and have their own personal agendas that they're pushing. Most submitters agree the ward system should go and that's something that Miller supports. Just over 40 submitters are being heard during the two-day hearing, after which a report will be prepared for consideration by the full council. Ruby McAndrew, 39, Dunedin News. A number of concerned residents are hoping to protect a threatened ecological reserve. They're worried that increased activity from locals and tourists will drive away wildlife. And they're appealing to the City Council for support. This is the Aramoana Salt Marsh, scarred by tyre tracks. It's a major concern for members of the Aramoana Conservation Trust. Chairman Bradley Kerno seeking support from the City Council in the Trust's bid to protect the Aramoana Ecological Reserve and the native wildlife within. Where in the future are we going to have areas where sea lions can give birth, where they can breed, where they can just be sea lions? And the answer is there's not very many places left in Otago. Members are also worried about the project to restore the historic Aramoana jetty, they're not strictly against the restoration, which is endorsed by the council, but they're worried the new jetty will bring more people and that'll have a detrimental effect on resident sea lions and yellow-eyed penguins. We worry about what impact a jetty may have on their habitat because we have two sea lions who have been born there in recent history, Lena and BK. They say the Aramoana Salt Marsh is nationally recognised for its ecological significance, one of only a couple in the country that's still in pristine condition. And tyre marks like this are extremely damaging. Those imprints are likely to last decades. And uh, on a salt marsh of national significance, uh, I think is quite undesirable, quite unacceptable. It's had, had, as Bradley said, this is an ecological area. It's one of the highest categories short of a national park in terms of its status. The council's got no jurisdiction over the Crown Reserve, which is administered by the Department of Conservation, and trust members are working with DOC to find a workable solution. Rosie Mannins, 39, Dunedin News. Still to come on 39 Dunedin News, more responsibility for the Chairman of the Otago Regional Council. He joins us to explain his new role. And later we look at more street art for Dunedin, this time from a visiting artist at the University. A lifestyle art to me as a person made wanting to escape the hustle and bustle of a big city. Wanting some animals, maybe able to grow their own veggies, have chickens, get their own hens. Lifestyle block can be your supermarket. Just a good way of living and a lot of people enjoy that rather than being in a city. A very sustainable way to live. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits.
Wake up time and another frantic day ahead for Haraway's Oat Singles. With three delicious flavours in each pack, they don't last long with this family. They're so convenient and tasty and they're ready in seconds. Haraway's Oat Singles are the ideal breakfast or snack on the run for today's busy families. And there's a flavour to suit everyone. Beat the rush and make sure you get your favourite flavour. Haraway's sure. Oat Singles. Try new Kiwi Favourites Caramel Variety Pack. rights to take one life in order to save another? Welcome to the ambiguities of law. Because whilst the law may be clear, there is still room for both yes and no. What? No! The decision will depend on logical thinking and the art of argument. And this is what we learn at New Zealand's first and world-renowned law faculty. You can stop now. I'm Latafale and this is my place in the world. Take your place in the world. Active Furnishers Limited, home of quality service with superior product and an in-house design team who are always happy to advise and create an imaginative solution for you. Active Furnishers Limited, part of Dunedin's design history. Is something we almost take for granted. A good hedge needs regular maintenance to look its best and to add value and character to your property. For all your hedge care needs, call the team at SGC Services on 0800 783 453. Big Orange for all your movies, records, books, and games. Pre loved needs and vinyl records, 45s, DVDs. A South Dunedin family owned business for over 15 years. Check us out on Facebook, opposite Westpac on the sunny side of King Edward Street. Discover New Zealand's most innovative museum, Toitu Otago Settlers Museum. 14 stunning galleries, three distinct architectural styles, and a million intriguing stories are yours to discover at Toitu Otago Settlers Museum. Open daily next to Dunedin Railway Station and with free admission, Toitu Otago Settlers Museum. For 30 years, Southern Clams have harvested New Zealand Little Neck Clams in the coastal waters of Otago. Hand harvesting to order at the right place and time ensures perfection of every clam you eat. New Zealand Little Neck Clams, harvested for you by Southern Clams. Welcome back. The owners of a local liquor store are set to appeal their 21-day trading suspension. Super Liquor Anderson's Bay is subject to the city's longest off-licence suspension, which has just taken effect. It's the result of alcohol being sold to a couple of teenagers at the store last October. Owners plan to appeal, although it's the second time in two years staff have been caught selling alcohol to minors. It's also the fifth breach for operating company McCarthy Enterprises since 2007. All right, let's take a look at this evening's financials. Firstly to the markets, and you see the NZX50 there finishing the day's trading uh, down 43 points to 5,822. And to the exchange rates, the Kiwi dollar up slightly against the Australian, down against those other major currencies. Well, Otago Regional Council Chairman Stephen Woodhead's just been elected to lead another organisation. He's the new chairman of Local Government New Zealand's Regional Sector Group. And he joins us now to talk about his role. Good evening to you, Stephen. Good evening, Callum. So explain to us uh, what this regional sector group is. The regional sector is the uh, grouping of regional councils and four unitary councils that come together as part of the local government family. Okay, how long have you been involved with, the, with this group? I've uh, been involved uh, for coming up uh, five and a half years now as my role as chairman of the Otago Regional Council and uh, I was formerly deputy chair of the regional sector. 
So what's prompted the move in, into the chairman's seat? Oh, there was, uh, there was a bit of an upset up country in, in uh, Greater Wellington Regional Council where the Fran Wild uh, chairperson there who was chairing regional sector lost her position and so we had to elect a new chair of the regional. So what, what, what do you hope to achieve in this role? What's your uh, initial job here? Oh, just to uh, ensure the good work that the regional sector does, we, we uh, deal with a lot of environmental matters at a, at a higher level, um, strategic level with government departments and the likes, and to have some combined work programs just to ensure they're working effectively for the next uh, 12 odd months to the end of the triennium. How will this... Uh if at all affect your role with, with the Otago Regional Council? Um, well, I'm, I'm hoping it won't affect the, uh, my local role too much at all, but it will be a few more trips to Wellington and uh, a bit more time in the office locally dealing with national matters. So what are the, the, the main concerns in those matters with, the, with this regional sector group? Um, they, they are primarily around the key issues around uh, hazard management, water, uh, both quantity and quality, and uh, RMA, resource management type issues. And, and again, we have a very strong relationship with um, uh, many of the ministry, government ministries dealing with those issues. So uh, th those are the sort of the key issues. And they align up with the issues, key issues for regional councils around the country. So plenty of challenges there, no doubt, in, in addressing those sorts of issues. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yep, yep. And uh, some significant challenges, particularly in the water space where, you know, community demand for an improvement in water quality and, uh, and uh, an economic push from the Crown around uh, growth in the regions. And uh, um, so... You know, looking at allocation issues and ensuring there's water available for the or the economy to grow and develop. So I would imagine there's a there's a crossover here with with the regional council as well and and, and those areas of focus. Yes, with Otago, absolutely. Mm, mm. Uh, the issues align very closely, and uh, so uh, yep, just uh, dealing with them at a national level uh, with my Wellington role. So having you now uh, at this national level, would this help maybe get some local issues sorted? quicker, more efficiently maybe? Oh, I wouldn't like to guarantee that. Um, you, you might hope so, but uh, certainly m m the focus is at a national level, so uh, whether that actually helps Otago or not, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. So what's the, what's the number one issue on the table at the moment for the Otago Regional Council? Um, implementing our, our water plan and particularly uh, the water quality side of it and uh, the, the rules are in place so we're, we're busy uh, working with landowners and, and uh, you know we've got some targets here in 2020 uh, so um, uh, you know yeah that, that's, it's the water quality and quantity focus is the main work stream. And your, your ultimate aim in regards to, to local government? Oh, <laughs> I just moved from one trinium to another, so we've got elections in October 2016. We'll, we'll reassess it all at that point. All right, and uh, more regular visits to Wellington, no doubt. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> a few more trips to Wellington and, and a bit of time in some offices there and, and dealing with those uh, national issues. Yes. All right, Stephen, thanks for your time this evening. Thank you. OK, after the break on 39 Dunedin News, we look at a mural being painted at the university from a world-renowned street artist. And researchers unveil a lot about Dunedin's heritage, thanks to a well-known local architect. Sir Bob Charles, New Zealand's greatest golfer and still going strong. I'm sure that Sportsville was a contributing factor to my success and I'll continue to use it. Sir Bob Charles Sportsville, a product so good he puts his name to it. Well I believe Sportsville helps maintain your quality of life. Now being used by active men and women globally to support strength and mobility. It works for me. Sir Bob Charles Sportsville in the new all black pack. Call now for the Sportsville special 0800 502 402. In every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Big Orange, for all your movies, records, books and games. Pre-loved needs and vinyl records, 45s, DVDs. A South Dunedin family owned business for over 15 years. Check us out on Facebook, opposite Westpac on the sunny side of King Edward Street. Active Furnishers Limited. Home of quality service with superior product and an in-house design team who are always happy to advise and create an imaginative solution for you. Active Furnishes Limited, part of Dunedin's design history. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, we're down George Street, down B, tip of the hat to the people we meet in certain skies.
moving around the corner, overseas, Best Removals Otago Limited, specialists in household removals and business relocations, as well as packing materials, secure storage. Best Removals can do it all. 0800 266 834. Pregnant? Need to talk? 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Pregnancy counselling services are here to help. It's free, it's confidential. Call us now on 0800 773 462. Oh, a lifestyler can be anybody. We look at a lifestyler as someone who perhaps has been a farmer and is re retiring into a smaller block. It could be someone who's working here in Dunedin and has a few acres at home. It could be mum and the kids with, um, with the pony on an acre. You know, it, it, it's anyone that's got uh, a little bit of land rather than just the quarter acre section. Tune into Girls Talk on Dunedin Television where we show you what's hot in Dunedin. A world-renowned Canadian street artist is in Dunedin, making his mark on the University of Otago campus. He's painting a mural on the side of a lecture theatre through a collaboration between the university and the Students' Association. And the artist is drawing inspiration from near and far. Art has a new home at the University of Otago. Canadian street artist Fluke and partner Talia Curran are on campus painting a new mural, months in the planning and they're happy to bring some vibrancy to the traditionally grayscale campus. The work is inspired uh, basically through a collaborative process. So we have, uh, part of it is uh, with the Maori department here at the school. Uh, so we have some of that stuff in the mural. There's my traditional style of, of graffiti and letter work and color palettes, and also things that we've, we've seen and come across uh, since we arrived. Fluke says the artwork's continually evolving based on his local experiences. And although he finds it challenging to have a constant audience of passers-by, he's happy to show just how much work goes into creating a mural. We have to deal with um, you having a lot of students and traffic and things like that, but it adds to the experience for the students. They get to see the artists at work and experience uh, street art rather than just see the finished product. The visiting artists are gauging public feedback as they go. Fluke says so far people on campus are supportive of the piece something OUSA events manager Dan Hendra is happy about. After more than a year of planning, the $17,000 project. Around the orientation period last year, where we uh, worked with a national-based artist, Sean Duffel, to uh, create a small piece just on the OUSA Recreation Centre wall. And uh, that was hugely successful. And uh, because of that, we gained uh, a bit of uh, interest from the university to uh, do a collaborative piece. Hendra says it's yet to be decided whether further artwork will be commissioned around campus. And while there's certainly potential for more, this mural's taking all the attention. Set to be completed in the next few days. Ruby McAndrew, 39, Dunedin News. The legacy of a prominent Dunedin architect is being realised by a local research group. Members are collating information about houses designed by Basil Hooper. And they're learning interesting details of the city's history. Basil Hooper's mark on the city is evident from the street. This building, just one of 75 the architects responsible for locally. A group's working to collate information about his creations, and that's sparked a workshop by Heritage New Zealand to help residents research their homes and uncover interesting historic data. I found out that the Scholar House is named after Scholar and Chisholm furniture manufacturers here in Dunedin, and a lot of these homes were built by newly rich people who had managed to set up manufacturing or industrial operations in the city. So by researching the homes, you actually get a snapshot of Dunedin at the time. About 10 of the 50-odd people at the workshop own a Hooper property. Pack wants that legacy realised, and the value of maintaining the houses known. She's excited to be involved in the research and says there's a sea of interesting information to uncover. 
Like in the Harriet Row house, there's a brick by the door and it's got Basil Hooper's name and his date and the date that he did the house. So that was a good starting point. And then there might be um, different types of wallpaper that's been used over time. There's um, drawings of the drainage. An internet archive detailing Hooper's local work has been created and is being expanded. Heritage New Zealand staff say that's a great focus point for locals as interest in the architect flourishes. It's made a strong contribution to the residential character of Dunedin and you know, Dunedin's uh, suburbs. And there are a lot of people that really enjoy living in his homes. Another seminar is planned for November, when the owner of Hooper's former home will talk about life at the property, all part of establishing a legacy from one of the nation's celebrated architects. David DeLorean, 39, Dunedin News. And now recapping tonight's top stories on 39 Dunedin News. On average, local parking wardens are subject to abuse once a fortnight with 30 separate incidents recorded in the last financial year. Debates raging at the City Council as submitters voice their opinions as part of the mandatory representation review. And concerned residents are calling on the City Council for support to protect the threatened Aramoana Ecological Reserve. And now let's take a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. We welcome in Phil Summerville. Hi, Phil. Yes. Hi, Callum. Um, I thought today, when I, as I chose a few stories to mention, I thought a good example of the variety in the newspaper every day. This is a sample, and they're from all over the place. First of all, um, Wednesdays is fresh day often, and there's recipes galore, Alison Lambert and Bevan Smith, wine column, beer column, all sorts of stuff there. Then the court news, uh, a man there was jailed for 14 years for a series of violent domestic assaults and rapes. And then probably on page one, it's such a good story tomorrow, that's the plan at the moment, story about a man who walked into a bar, put down uh, $440 and said the first 40 pensioners who'd come and have a free meal. It's a nice story, so read about that. And then um, the battle between Kings and the Ministry of Education. It's far from over, so we've got the, the latest step in, in, in that saga. All right, thanks, Phil. Tomorrow's uh, ODT. All right, now let's take a look at local weather. This local weather report proudly brought you in association with Silberhorn Sports Bell. And today's City View taken of the highest letterboxes in Dunedin probably the coldest as well. Temperatures at 3 o'clock today, 8 at the Central City, 9 in the Gardens and 11 on the Tyree. The situation sees that depression deepening in the Tasman. It will move past the South Island on Friday, bringing more unsettled weather. Forecast around the main towns in the lower south for tomorrow. Invercargill gets up to a high of 13 with a freshening northerly. Gore a high of 12. Tiano uh, in Increasing cloud and a high of 12, Alexandra 13 the high. Queenstown gets to 13, so does uh, Omaru, Wanaka and Twizel with uh, some fine weather as well. Dunedin tonight's low is 2, tomorrow morning frosts, cloudy periods uh, tomorrow and a high of 8, the low 4, Thursday a few spots of rain, a high of 10, the low 7. And finally to the southern clams, tidal and fishing information, low tide up our state tomorrow morning, followed by high tide 10 past 2. And fishing rated good tomorrow and best just after 10.30. And that's our local news for today. On behalf of the 39 Dunedin News team, have a good night. This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.